Baldur's Gate 3 is around the corner and we're going to play this a lot on this channel. Baldur's Gate 3 will use the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rule set and I want to teach you a little bit at least how this works and what you can expect in that game. Because this will not be your standard RPG type of game and you will not be having massive hit points and you will not be dealing massive damage but so will also your enemy. So if you want to know what to expect in Baldur's Gate 3 then definitely stay tuned because I'm going to talk about what I learned during pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons and what you can expect in Baldur's Gate 3 as a PC game. So Baldur's Gate 3, as I said, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rule set. That means there are some underlying rules that every single encounter and every single thing that happens in game works. And that's maybe also the reason behind the 17,000 advertised endings of Baldur's Gate 3. That also means that you can have very different ways to play the game. And I want to make one thing sure right at the start. There is no bad way to play Baldur's Gate 3. There is maybe a way to lose this game when your entire party dies, of course. But if you roll something and you fail the roll, I will talk about rolling in a second. But if you fail a check, that doesn't mean that the game is over or that the game is going into a wrong direction. There is no wrong direction in Baldur's Gate 3. There is usually no wrong direction when you play Dungeons and Dragons and that's because of a very specific rule. It's not written down like that, but Dungeons and Dragons is all about the journey. So the rule is you play the game for the journey and you see what you can achieve if you can get the things done that you would like to get done. But just like in real life, some things will just simply not work and you will just get a different outcome. You will not lose the game, you will get a different style of your story. To give a little bit more educated advice, I took this D&D player's handbook. I got some things out of it that are really interesting because it is the 5th edition handbook. The rules apply also to Baldur's Gate 3. And one very important sentence in there in the introduction already is the dice will be cruel to you, but you will soldier on. And that's exactly what I just told you about Baldur's Gate 3 that there is no bad way to play the game. You will just, as the, as the book says, you will soldier on. And to take away a little bit of the pressure at the start, especially when you are new to this entire thing or you, the last D&D game or the last big RPG game that you played is a little bit longer ago and you are now in the process of building a new character and or you're thinking already about playing a different character or playing something that you like every single character will be valid that means there are not real bad choices every single class in Dungeons and Dragons has got a purpose on top of that, you are not alone. You can be uh, up to four people in your party. And of course, you want to uh, make a group that has got a lot of aspects in it, like melee uh, and ranged attack people, spellcasters, and also like heavy two-handed mall swinging characters. You want to have a good functioning group and not running around with four mages that are all squishy and that don't really do that much damage at the start so you want a group that is working well together but your character the one that you are making at the start of the game does not need to be that one character that can do everything it is your choice and you have all the possibilities there just the races and classes without subclasses are more than 130 choices and possible disadvantages are really negligible once you need to roll the dice and dungeons and dragons works like that you have different abilities you have advantages and disadvantages on specific roles like for example nature or intimidation so whenever you have a check so you want to do an action that requires you to have let's say historic knowledge or you need to have na na natural knowledge so, so nature knowledge or you need to be very intimidating to get something out of a different character 
you need to roll the dice. So when you're doing a check, you're always rolling a d20. That means you have 20 sides on that die. And it can be everything from 1 to 20. Everything should be equally available to you. So that means that you are as often rolling a 1 as you roll a 20. A 20 is usually a critical strike, a critical hit when you roll the dice with the highest number with, with the d20 because you need this not only for these checks when you are engaging into different situations, but you also need to roll that dice when you're attacking someone. So it's not only about making damage. That's the next thing. You need the D20 is, is such a interesting die. It's the RNG aspect of this die and entirely of Dungeons and Dragons that makes this entire journey so interesting and not foreseeable at all. Usually a 20 is a critical strike. That means whatever you wanted to do will definitely happen. If you want to strike someone, that will definitely happen and you make some additional damage on top of that. And a one is always a critical failure, which means the thing that you wanted to do did not work at all. It did hurt your allies. It did hurt yourself. It did uh, give you a, an, a special disadvantage that can be also very interesting to see. I mean, if you want to intimidate someone and you roll a one and this is a critical failure that can be very interesting in the outcome. Exactly like you want to intimidate someone and you roll a 20 and, and this person just simply breaks down and gives you all the information you need, but you will always keep on moving through the story as long as I said your entire party will not die. And that means that you should definitely look out for something that you like to play. It is important to come to the game with a character you are excited about and rather than w what seems to be the best option. To tell you a little bit about my own experience, um, I'm playing pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons for almost a year now. And my first character was a very safe option. It was a barbarian because it was my first ever try to play Dungeons and Dragons. Also, the first ever try to, pay, uh, to play it with pen and paper. So I settled down for a uh, easy option. And the Barbarian was really nice to play for the first half a year. But now I feel that I, I would like to have a little bit more options. Don't settle down for the easiest option. Maybe take a twist. Maybe if you're interested in something and you, want, like, you would like to see how a cleric would work and with spells and being like holy and and having those spells that that you can cast on your members that you can cast on enemies if you want to try that out try it out it will not hinder you in any kind of form as i said you can have up to three other people that will help you in your group and will make your group work at the end also very important the i cannot emphasize that too much it is the nature of dungeons and dragons that you're not experiencing everything the world has to offer in just one run or in just one sitting or with that one single character in uh, Baldur's Gate 3 it is limited in its directions because the game is basically telling you everything and you do not have that person called dungeon master which you usually have when you sit down with other players that can dynamically change the story and dynamically work with whatever you throw at them. The game is a little bit more limiting in that regard because they had to think about all the different possibilities up front and then give you choices. A dungeon master in person can give you those choices dynamically whenever he feel, he or she feels like it. They can alter the entire story for you. So if you have a dungeon master that, wa that just wants to, the party to survive, that dungeon master will then let enemies attack, maybe not let en every enemy attack one single person and also not only attacking those persons with a low armor class so that they are going to be beaten down. But that could happen in Baldur's Gate 3. Another thing that I want to point out, if you are already familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, the maximum level in Baldur's Gate 3 will be level 12. That means you're, for example, losing all the spells that are level 7, 8 and 9. And one of them is, for example, Wish, 
which I would like to read out to you because the, this, this would be just crazy. Wish is the mightiest spell a mortal creature can cast. By simply speaking aloud, you can alter the very foundations of reality in accord with your desires. Like, think about implementing that into the game. This is just impossible. You can do that with a human dungeon master in, in sitting in front of you that will then need to change the entire story or the entire dungeon or the entire world. Even that, I would say, would take some time to prepare. I think not every dungeon master can can just simply do that and there are more spells like that teleportation is another one that you will not be able to use because it's also like a level 8 level 9 spell and things like that so th this is definitely something you're limited in Baldur's Gate 3. Another thing that I want to point out is you cannot expect to have high hit points to do massive damage. Dungeons and Dragons is, is that higher levels should feel as if you are a hero and you have some special power but you also get some reality checks here and there when you meet enemies that are just more powerful than you and it is not the case in this game that you can just simply attack any enemy and just play like an action rpg that's not diablo this is not how you should play the game you need to think about not only what you're going to do right now in this step but you would also need to think about at what you're going to do in the next steps and how can you help your other people to win the fight and sometimes even sacrificing some hit points here and there maybe even sacrificing an ally those are the choices that you need to make throughout the game one last thing i want to add if you are playing usually dungeons and dragon with pen and paper you have one single character which you need to learn and if you're going to check out one of those characters in the rule set, you will find out that one single character has got so many variations and so many things to, to know, to think about. In Baldur's Gate 3, you will be handed four companions. So you need to remember four different characters with all their spells, with all their possibilities. As far as I heard, there are more than 600 possible actions for your characters. Remembering all of them with four different classes, four different races, four different feats, traits, points here and there, advantages and disadvantages and whatsoever. Don't stress yourself too much. And that's really nice that this game comes with round-based action so you can really think about your next step and definitely take a look at all the possible things that you can do because there are some ways you can solve not only fights but can solve different situations very creative that's also what the developers said that this game will be very creative and will give you a lot of options explore those don't rush the story make it your own and have a wonderful time playing Baldur's Skate 3. We will talk about classes in the next video which classes to choose what is the best way to start if you're not that familiar with Dungeons and Dragons so stay tuned for that I would love to see you around here like and subscribe to this video and have a wonderful day.